to introduce our speaker. She's a fellow Rotarian from the Kent Rotary Club. She's been very involved in the international activities of Rotary. She's been on a, a fellow uh, Ethiopian trip with Ra our own Ralph Monroe. She's assistant governor for District 5030. Please welcome Julie Lefebvre. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm Rotarian welcome to Dan Amos. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. Other than speaking uh, at Stanford about uh, three years ago, I think it was, this is the first time I've had an opportunity to speak on the West Coast. So it's a real pleasure to be here today to talk to the influential and business leaders of Seattle. Now, I'm willing to bet that the vast majority of you have never heard of the name of Aflac prior to the Aflac Duck campaign. Before the new millennium, nine out of ten people had never heard of our company, but all of that changed in 2000 when we introduced the Aflac Duck, and today, nine out of ten people know our name. I hope you've enjoyed some of the annex over the years. Uh, we've done some 55 U.S. commercials, but first let me tell you a little bit about our business and then go into a few other things. Uh, let me say that the best way I can describe what we do uh, is to say that when an illness or an injury strikes, People are burdened with unexpected medical and non-medical expenses, and we are there to help take care of those expenses. That's true whether you're covered with major medical insurance or not, or even national health care in Japan. Because AFLAC's policies pay cash directly to the policyholders, the money can be used for anything that they might deem appropriate, co-pays, deductibles, and the list goes on. Essentially, our products or protect our policyholders' income and assets so they can focus on recovery, not just the financial stress that's associated. With all the financial hardships today in the economy we have, we feel our products are needed more than ever. It's also important to note that advertising to remind people how our products help and also keep our brand in front of the consumers. Here in the U.S. today, we've achieved brand recognition of 93 percent, which puts us in names like Microsoft and Nike and Coca-Cola. With Seattle located on the west coast here in the United States, and such a great city has established close ties with many Asian countries, including Japan. With AFRAC's corporate headquarters in Columbus, Georgia, many people are surprised and sometimes fascinated that a company in a mid-sized Georgia town could create such a strong presence in Japan. The Aflac story in Japan became uh, important in 1974 when we became licensed. Today in Japan, we insure one out of four households. We have 97 percent name recognition, which is even higher than the U.S. And our operations in Japan account for three-quarters of our earnings and more than three-quarters of our $115 billion in assets. AFLAC is the number one insurance company in Japan in terms of policies in force, passing Nippon Life, who held that title for over 100 years. We insure 90 percent of all the companies listed on the Tokyo Stock Exchange and the government agencies, including the Ministry of Health and Welfare and the Ministry of Defense. And from an operation standpoint, we employ over 5,000 people in Japan, about the same number we do in the U.S. But in addition, we have 120,000 independent sales agents and associates in 82 offices. Now, I start off with you with this information about Japan to make you aware of last year's earthquake and tsunami that caused such devastation and certainly tested the resolve of millions of Japanese. As business leaders, I know each of you often face challenges in overcoming difficult situations. So you all know too well that if there's one thing that will get you off track, it's a crisis. Well, last year, the earthquake, the tsunami, and then the nuclear crisis certainly presented AFLAC with a crisis of huge proportion. But never in a million years did I think that we would be managing two crises at the exact same time, and yet that's exactly what played out last year. The second crisis of the brand seemed small in comparison, but nevertheless it was important to our company 
because like all of us here, we work very hard to protect our brand and our image. Let me tell you a little more about these two crises and how we manage through them and to stay on track starting with the earthquake. You may recognize, I want to show you a quick clip of what took place on March 11th. So if you'll run that. Off the coast of Sendai in northern Japan, a succession of extraordinary waves, some said to be 10 meters high, accelerate towards the shoreline. Striking land, the massive surge turns into a black wall of water, unstoppable by man-made structures. Despite a tsunami warning, many are caught out. To the right of screen, some motorists drive away, but others on the highway seem unaware of what's approaching across the field and have little chance of escaping it. A swirling kaleidoscope of broken buildings and floating cars. These images clearly capture the power of the tsunami, but from above it's hard to calculate how many people are caught up in it. Only those on elevated land could possibly avoid it. More recently, you've probably been seeing in the clips in the media about the large and sometimes small items washing up on shores here in Washington and also Oregon and California and everywhere else. And I, I think what it does is it drives home the point that we're all connected and a crisis can happen anywhere at any time. Following the devastated earthquake and tsunami, we were very fortunate to learn quickly that all of our employees were safe and accounted for. And that Friday morning when I got the call at 4 a.m., Aflac was the first company to donate to the victims of the devastation through the Red Cross, and we gave about 100 million yen, which is about $1.2 million to start that process. We also uh, were relieved to find out that our corporate operations in Tokyo were up and running and ready to assist Japanese policyholders in the time when they needed us most, and certainly this was the time. We even had a backup center in Osaka, Japan, ready to assume some workloads if they needed. So the next question became, how does the impact of our business as a whole and how are we going to communicate to our shareholders, our customers, our employees, and our sales force? By mid-morning Friday U.S. time, CNBC, Fox News, Wall Street Journal, and many of the other media outlets were calling our offices looking for information because they knew of the close ties that we had to Japan. Those who work closely with me know that one of my favorite sayings, and I also live by, is that bad news does not improve with age. By this I mean that even if the news isn't good, make that especially if it isn't good, don't wait to deliver it. I believe as leaders it's important to share that kind of news as quickly and as accurately as possible to begin dealing with it effectively. The fact is, people can handle bad news, but what they cannot handle is uncertainty. Don't get me wrong, the news that we had to share wasn't necessarily all bad. In fact, there was good news. Our employees were safe, our business operations were running, and we didn't expect any material effect on the claims or in the earnings because we had the actuarial numbers for it. But there was a lot that we did not know. Even so, lack of information doesn't mean that you can stand back and let uncertainty fester. We take our responsibility to communicate with our shareholders seriously, and I think this brief clip that you'll see in a moment will explain that. To me, this kind of communication and transparency is critical for many reasons. It's the right thing to do over time, it establishes credibility and consistency with investors, employees, customers, and sales agents. I think it was evident in the stock market's reaction. Although our stock dropped slightly due to investors' concerns, I think it would have dropped much more had we not communicated transparently. Take a brief look at the clips that we had.
Affleck CEO, Dan Anna joins me right now by phone. Uh, Dan, good to have you back. Uh, what's it like there? What have you been hearing there? Well, I, I've been talking to our people almost hourly, and, of course, uh, Tokyo is coming back to normal. When it first hit, um, basically the, the airport was shut down, the rails were shut down. They're beginning to come back. Joining us by phone is the CEO of that company, Dan Amos. Uh, welcome to In, In Business. Uh, first off, have you accounted for all of your employees? Uh, yes, we have. I've been in constant contact since uh, almost since the quake hit. And the majority of our employees, about uh, 80% are in Tokyo. We have six offices that were affected by the quake, um, but um, we are accounted for all the employees. This is when I say that that we're really on and we have to show that we can perform and why people need it. So we will have claims that are due to the accidents and whatever that might occur in addition to that to the death claims. And it, what part of the problem will be how to file death claims. And we're going to make it as simple as we possibly can. You'll recall that uh, the U.S. State Department issued a voluntary evacuation and warning to the travel in Japan. With so many foreigners pulling their people out, many Japanese people, including our employees, felt alone and alienating. So the warnings and, and uh, evacuation aside, two days later, I was on my way to Tokyo. My 82-year-old mother and I'm an only child, said to me, if something happens to you, I will have you dug up and shot again. <laughs> um, but I still believe it was the best uh, decision I ever made to go at the time, and I don't regret it for a second. I was able to convey the messages of support that so many people had to them and to let them know that we cared about them and that they were in pride. Of course, that was a huge crisis we faced. But every business leader here knows how important your brand is, and anything that threatens or tarnishes your image is a crisis of another kind. While we were still hearing about the anguish of the lives lost, the U.S. voice of the Aflac duck at that time was Gilbert Godfrey, who decided to tweet what he called jokes about the situation. But they were not remotely funny at all, and they were very hurtful and insulting to the Japanese people. I was faced with a decision. Most of you in this room probably would have done the same thing I did, but I literally got a phone call from a reporter who told me about the tweet and said, what is your response? And I said, would you give me 15 minutes? And he said, yes, but what are you going to do in 15 minutes? And I said, I'm going to fire Gilbert Godfrey, which we did do. We immediately let him go, assembled a team that went to work, on how the Aflac duck would find its new voice. Now, that was a problem for us because understand we had to pull every commercial that we had in the United States. And as a team, we had to think creatively and find a way because we had no advertising while we were searching far and wide to find the Aflac's new voice. But we did find in our archives that we had a silent movie commercial that we had never used, so we adapted it. And it was the only one we had. So look at the commercial of what we ran and how we handled it. We ran that, thank you. We ran that commercial looking for the voice of the Aflac duck, and we found a whopping 11,200 people submitted entries and auditions for the chance to be the voice of the Aflac duck. Rather than telling you about it, let me show you a clip from CBS Evening News. As you'll see, the CBS Evening News called the Aflac duck America's most famous duck. So run this. And America's most famous duck is about to get a new quack. 
Finally tonight, the job market is starting to pick up again. In fact, one job that's become available involves selling insurance. The main qualification, the ability to sound like a duck. Mark Strassman tells us the line of applicants was long and loud. Think of it as American Idol. And I am the next Aflac duck. Meets Am Planet. I have webbed feet. I walk like a duck, and I had a dream that I was a duck this morning. A national audition to find the voice of Aflac's next Aflac. spokes duck. Aflac. The one Americans heard in 10,000 commercials a year. What'd you say? Aflac. The star of the company's 100 million dollar plus advertising budget. Why not? Why not me? Aflac. New Yorker Bradley Ellison has the gravelly voice. Aflac. I think I'm good. I think I think I'm like one of the final ten. <laughs> After 11 years, last month the Aflac duck lost the only voice it ever had. Aflac! Shock comedian Gilbert Gottfried. But Gottfried offended Aflac with jokes about Japanese tsunami victims. The insurance giant does 75% of its business in Japan. So CEO Dan Amos fired him. The first thing is panic. You know, a crisis has just occurred. What is going to be our next step here? Well, find a new duck voice. That wasn't funny, dude. <laughs> Not exactly what Aflac executives learned at business school. More than 11,000 people auditioned online. Hundreds more in person, doing their duck in a variety of moods. Laugh if you want. For Aflac, getting it right is no joke. Aflac. By month's end, the company will pick a new voice. Oh, you want me to say Aflac in Spanish? The job pays low six figures just to quack one word. Well, Aflac. is this a great country or what? Never dreamt that I would be quacking for my living. <laughs> Mark Strassman, CBS News, Atlanta. Last uh, spring, I received an email from a producer at NBC who had coordinated the news for all the affiliates for over 20 years and about our decision to sever our ties with Gilbert Gottfried and search for a new voice. He said that this was the best example of turning a black eye into a beauty mark that he'd ever seen in the PR world and perhaps uh, ever, he said. I wish I could tell you that uh, we were that smart, but sometimes luck falls your way, and that's one of the things that happened with us. But I think the events that we faced proved to me that when you're decisive, you are transparent, and you ultimately are trying to do the right thing, it will reflect in your company and in your image. We were certainly happy when the Aflac Duck got its quack back, and you've probably seen our latest commercial, but let me run it just to show you. Man, I'm glad Aflac pays cash. Aflac! Ha! Is it Major Medical enough? Ha! No. Who's going to help cover the holes in their plans? Aflac! But like medical bills they don't pay for. Ha! Aflac! Or help pay the mortgage. Ha! Or child care. Ha! Uh. Aflac! And everyday expenses. Ha! Ha! Aflac! Help your family stay afloat at Aflac.com. So that's a little uh, background on the Aflac duck in the U.S. Now I often get questions about how the Aflac duck became popular in Japan, where we achieved 97 percent name awareness. Clearly, you cannot take a one-size-fits-all approach to international advertising. So ever since 2003, when we first debuted the Aflac duck in Japan, we've always conveyed a quieter, softer. Uh, voice of the Aflac duck not to offend the Japanese consumers. The Aflac duck continues to be very popular in Japan, but with such different advertising dates, it's probably hard to fathom. But we also hit something of a big PR home run, I would say, with what we call the Maniki Neko duck. Now, if you travel to Japan or Asia, you've probably seen the good luck character of the uh, Maniki Neko or beckoning cat, which the, he has his paw raised that you've seen. The commercial I'm about to show you plays off this character with an Aflac twist. Send 
の手術に安心を招き猫だく。先進医療も通院も招き猫だく。猫とアヒルが力を合わせてみんなの幸せを招き猫だく。上手たくさん安心を招きます。医療保険新エバーの誕生です。The、uh, the success of the Monarchy Neko Duck campaign surpassed our greatest expectations and became nothing short of an advertising phenomenon. When the Aflac、uh, Cat Duck commercial was launched, it immediately soared to the number one commercial in Japan, beating every Commercial in every industry. The jingle that you heard was so popular it became the number one download on all cell phones in Japan. <laughs> as you can see, the Mineki Neko brought Aflac good luck as well. Advertising and branding certainly have a huge impact on the image of the company, and so do ethics. But unfortunately, in today's world, many people are under the impression that the phrase "business ethics." Is nothing more than an oxymoron. I was brought up to believe that businesses can survive, even thrive, by acting ethically and helping others. I know that most of you feel that way, and also know that the Rotary Clubs supports many great causes. And no matter whether your company is large or small, as business leaders, we know how important it is to develop a team of dedicated people. I was raised to believe that if you take care of your employees, they'll take care of the business, and that's the framework under which I manage the company. Earlier this year, Aflac was given the honor of being included in the Fortunes list of the 100 best places to work、uh, for the 14th consecutive year. We were listed in Latina Magazine, rated Aflac number four of the 50 best places to work for Latinos in 2011. And Black Enterprise Magazine recognized us as one of the 40 best places to work for diversity. And as was mentioned, for the sixth year, Ethisphere has recognized us as the most ethical. Now, why does that matter? The reason I'm so proud of these awards is that it tells me that we can truly create successful teams of people from all walks of life at any company, including Aflac. You are certainly out there trying to set goals and working toward achieving them. The numbers don't just happen; it's people who make the numbers happen and help us reach our goals. Fortunately, our people have helped us achieve our goals. In fact, we have achieved our operating earnings objectives for the last 22 years in a row. It's important because let's be clear: profits and shareholders' return determine whether the company is successful or not. But all things being equal, employees, investors, and customers would rather do business with a company that is also a good corporate citizen. In other words, helping others can make good business sense. Our national philanthropic focus that was mentioned is cancer treatment and research for children. Seventeen years ago, we began sponsoring the Aflac Cancer and Blood Disorder Centers. Of Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. In fact, there is a Aflac Seattle connection that I thought you would find interesting. In 1988, Ansley Riedel was a 10-month-old little girl from Atlanta who was diagnosed with AML, a difficult form of leukemia. Treatments for this aggressive cancer require bone marrow treatments in certain cases, and there was no place in Georgia to have it done. So little Ansley and her family got out to Seattle and went to the Fred Hutch Hospital. I'm happy to say that the doctors and nurses here at the Hutch saved Ansley's life with cutting-edge treatment. Ansley experienced transformed their family and especially Vicky Riedel, her mother. Following Ansley's recovery, Vicky went to pursue fundraising to help bring the treatments to Georgia for other children. When she approached Aflac, we were so moved that we made a decision to sponsor the cancer center. What started out as a donation sparked a cause that transformed Aflac's culture and created the Aflac Cancer Center at Children's Healthcare, which has become one of the top P 
pediatric cancer centers in the United States today. The fight against childhood cancer is something that has become very personal to everyone at AFLAC. Since 1995, as they mentioned, we have raised over $75 million for that center. But what was not mentioned is most important to me, and that is that our sales associates donated over half of that money out of their commissions. To me, this proves that coming together as part of a common cause can make your company stronger and exemplifies the spirit of what makes AFLAC special. So now the rest of the story. Today, Ansley is a nurse at the AFLAC Cancer Center helping children and their families fight cancer. Now you can probably tell I could talk about the AFLAC Cancer Center a lot because I truly love that place. But let me turn back to the business side. In the coming weeks and months and years ahead, when you turn on your TV, you'll see an AFLAC duck commercial, and I hope you'll remember the lunch today and a little laugh. I also hope it will convey the message of who we are. So let me end today with the late night talk host show, Jimmy Fallon's rendition of a casting call for the voice of the AFLAC duck, and then I'll answer any questions. You guys hear about this? Gilbert Gottfried was fired from his job as the voice of the Affleck duck uh, after some insensitive tweets about the crisis in Japan. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, now, Affleck says that they're already auditioning other comedians. Check it out. Affleck! Have you seen this company? It's Affleck! <laughs> oh, Affleck, yes, thank you. Yes, even the ducks are like, enough bills. Yes, thank you. <laughs> hey, you got the, uh, you got the, uh, yeah, like a... yeah, they got it's just a duck. Yeah. I flack in shirts. I flack in shirts. There's two kinds of insurance, regular shirts and I flack. I flack, what? Why am I here if you already fired me? What is happening? You got the duck with the insurance and the protection and the Affleck will lift the flat and down. Looks like they have some really good options. We'll see what they are. Thank you very much. Seattle Rotary Online is made possible in part by a grant from First Choice Health, working with the Washington Health Information Collaborative to use technology to bring better health care to patients throughout the Pacific Northwest. First Choice Health.